Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Hello everyone, good morning I hope you all well and always happy We are from group 1 We would like to take this opportunity to talk to you about cross-cultural communication Before we presentation, let me introduce our group member My name is Anissa Maulidina and my partner Dwi Septian Wicaksono Elsa Salsabila Fitria Cayani, Sunan Rohmat, and Vanessa Christina Paskaniki Julu. We from undergraduate student of Office Administration Education, Class A, Faculty of Economic, Universitas Negeri Jakarta. The content of this presentation is number one, the definition of intercultural communication. Number two. Analyzing culture's basic concept. Number three, the organisms of intercultural communication. Number four, factor that affect cultural communication differences. Number five, how intercultural barriers can be overcome. Before discussing the definition of intercultural communication, I will first explain the background of communication. Communication is very important for people's life. Communication is a process of exchanging verbal and nonverbal, symbol between sender and receiver to change behavior. Understanding communication seems at least. Considering that communication is a process that never stops imposing human life, one of which is about intercultural communication. Human life in a community that has policies about something they have in common. And communication is the only thing, the way to form that together. Communication as Robert said is to create or make our worries become more certain. A shared understanding among individuals as member social group will easy produce not only use social unit but also as well as cultural or cultural unit in society communication and culture are not just the word but the different concept cannot be separate culture itself is a way of life that develop and shared by a group of people from generation to generation Intercultural communication is any process of sharing information, ideas, or feeling among those from different cultural backgrounds. The process of sharing information is carried out orally and in writing, body language, personal style, or appearance, or help with other things around that clarify the message. Sometimes the existence of cultural difference can cause conflict between communicator with the communicant. Because of the meaning of ten experience or uncertainty, this uncertainty can reduce if the communicator with the communicant is able to process effective communication. The definition of intercultural communication. In this era of globalization, social change in society is unavoidable. One of the main factors that change in social society is a thought of cultural both inside and outside. The rapid development of science and technology in field of communication make it easier for people to get to know other people's culture from different cultural backgrounds. Intercultural communication is the process of exchanging thought and meaning between people from different cultures. According to Armawati Arbi, intercultural communication is communication between people of different cultures. For example, between ethnicity, race, and social class. Intercultural communication that is interactive is communication carried out by communicator 
with communicant in the direction or reciprocal but a loud step put interactive and transactional communication undergo a dynamic process because the process takes place in a living developing and social context even chance based on time situation and certain condition because the communication process carried us denimeter or life for the communication process Analyzing continuous basic concepts An of the problems we face in defining culture is that the various human states have different views on culture Also, in certain context, it can be an emotional background word But when certain cultures are considered, considered a word But when certain content of incident superior of other even if we treat good cause in natural definition and vision, difference of the will, every size, difference page, consider the following uh, example. Number one, culture is defined as historical definition system of symbols, meaning and norms. Number two, culture is the system of knowledge that is the uh, that is learned by a regular group. Of people. Number three, an ensemble of social examples, genus, centuries, exemplification, and practice of action which has the quality of a mental appearance. Uh, this print in the idea of community, which can be a short nation or of my group. There is also the idea of subgroups with. Uh, within the regular community, the culture with and culture are often referred to as uh, subtrust. Subtrust might have very different sorts of identity. For example, in South Africa, uh, in South Africa, the two most important cultural differences are religion and kin identity. In other instances. Religion, political opinion, and geography location of play a part. Uh, whatever the textbook definition, the everyday reality is that organizations are becoming more multicultural into into sense. Work workers are become uh, more different, and organizations are more decided to community with consumer and and alien from different cultures. In editing, many companies are on com of internet internationality. They face the can of adapting to local to culture with still managing their initial image. Another intercultural competition is that even where we have common institution of ideas the fusion of these by different communities might be different. For example, an community might have a common legal system, but some communities might see this as a fine method of method of prejudging opinion of this might see the system as a diminution. A further commission is that the situation is not static. Fortress such as urbanizing are bearing up about significant changes as people adapt to new ways of living. Because culture is perished by community, or community is the culture leader. Is the, it is the cultural assumption in our community that raises difference when we community or cultural. So, the rapid development of stance and technology in the field of the community make it easier for people to get to get to know other people cultures from different cultural back background. Individuals when enter a new environment, men make a score cultural contact, then cultural community term in federal. Thus, 
cultural of now us international communication is an operation that must be called up by so much to know uh, to know lender and everything at excellent interdiction intercultural communication is the approach of examining being so uh, to the meaning between people of the mind area manufacture into less the appearance of means where is the standing in cross cultural communication in the company problems uh, problems of uh, preferred norms because the lens and action that make one person locked down on everyone with of the sort action and other problems this make the communication between everything not solved so the evidence of the, the company can resume because there in the not good competition between employees. Therefore, uh, the forever in the first cultural comparison and synergy become an important as around is the era. Companies that have interest companies will be able to secure and sustain success in global business. Interest cultural incidency the importance of cultural advertisements being open often do difference and skill in commodity in commodity retailing. Local Commission of the International Commission School of this uh, uh, training on interest competition, chairperson of training and interest and in the sharing for all the employers. My name is Elsa Salasabila and I will explain about cultural relativism or relativity. The concept of cultural relativity derives mainly from the field of anthropology. In its extreme form, it holds that culture can be evaluated only in terms of their own values and institution. From this perspective, we cannot even apply our own concept of truth and consistency to other cultures. This suggests that the concept used by people can be interpreted only in the context of their own way of life. But can we understand a culture only if we work from within the, that culture and accept its values, even if we see them as illogical and contradictory? This extreme view suggests that all cultural values are equally tenable. The weakness of this view is that we, we would then have to accept Nazism and apartheid as valid cultures and judge them by their own standard. A less extreme view is that if we are to understand another culture, we need to compare it, but not judge it with reference to some other culture, usually our own. It is important that we should not take our own culture as the standard by which the, by which other culture are judged. We need to encourage tolerance and be skeptical of of any claims for you for universal objective standards. This we can discuss whether the religious beliefs of culture A are more or less consistent than those of culture B. From a practical viewpoint, this less extreme form of cultural relativism has more to offer when considering inter intercultural communication. Okay, the next slide is ethnocentrism. Ethnocentrism is the view that uncritically presupposes that one own culture is the criterion against which all other culture must be judged. It is almost always used in a negative sense to describe attitude that refuse to recognize the validity of value that differ from their own. It is difficult to avoid some measure of ethnocentrism as many cultural values are considered to be universal values of or truth. Have you ever seen or eaten food from another country, such as dried squid or fried crickets? And think of it as wet and gross. This is an example of ethnocentrism. That means you use your own culture as the center and evaluate other culture based on it. You are judging 
they are judging or making assumptions about the food of other country based on your own norms, values, and or beliefs. Thinking that squid is smelly or people shouldn't eat insects are examples of ethnocentrism in society in societies where people may, may not eat dried squid or insects. Is ethnocentrism bad or good? One, on the one hand, ethnocentrism can lead to negative judgment of the behavior of groups or societies. It can also lead to discrimination against people who are different. For example, in many countries, there is a minority of stand-based discrimination. But on the other hand, ethnocentrism can create loyalty among the same social group or people in the same society. For example, during the World Cup or Olympics, you may tend to to root for your own country and believe that the players your team is presenting your country are much better. National pride is also part of ethnocentrism. To avoid judging the cultural pra practice of groups that are different to yours, you can use the cultural relativism approach. Cultural relativism refers to not judging a culture to our standard of what is right or wrong, strange or normal. Instead, we should try to understand cultural practice of other groups in its own cultural context. For example, instead of thinking fried cricket are disgusting, one should instead ask why do some why do some cultures eat fried insects? You may you may learn that fried crickets are grasshopper are full of protein and in Mexico. It is famous Oaxaca regional cuisine hand and has been eaten for thousands of years as a healthy food surge. Some people worry that concept of cultural can also be abused and mis misinterpreted. If one culture behave one way, does that mean all culture can behave that way as well? For example, many co many country and international international organization oppose the act of whaling for environmental re reason. The environmental organizations say that there are there are not many whales left, and such fishing practice should be stopped. Should be stopped. However, other country uh, argue that. Whaling is a cultural practice that has been around for thousands of years because, because it may be part of a, a country ocean culture. This country may say that such a cultural practice should not be opposed based on cultural difference, say by in by an in a country that does not understand. Who gets to define what a normal, uh, what a moral, cultural behavior is? Is really immoral? Two different culture may have a very different answer. As we saw in the above example, another more ex extreme instance would be female genital, genital cutting in some parts of the world. Locally, it is a good that. The practice has cultural roots, but such a practice has raised concern among many international human rights organizations. Anthropologists say that we that when we think about different culture and society, we should think about their customs in a way that help us make sense of how their cultural practice fit within their overall cultural context. For example. Having several was perhaps make economic sense among her herder who move around frequently. Talk such an understanding, polygamy makes cultural sense. 
So, in this global era, communication, interaction, and intercultural encounters happen every second. Technology expands the ability of people through all the world to connect to each other for vacation, for business purpose, or for education. Intercultural communication skills will be critical necessity to able this work in multicultural work phase and interact with people from other cultures, often in other language, is inherent to the success of multinational business. Effective global enterprise communication skills are the backbone that support the transaction of business around the world. The importance of intercultural awareness and the need for intercultural communication competence training for all local and multinational companies. Therefore, intercultural cooperation and synergy become an important aspect in this era. Companies that have intercultural competence will be able to succeed and sustain success in global business. Anyone who is in international business context works for a foreign company or an expatriate, expatriate in a country when interacting with foreigners must have experience by occurrences that imply incomprehensive for smile modern comments in unclear language due to not being understood by words or spoken. I will give some example like in some big, uh, big countries such as the United States, United Kingdom, Australia, Singapore, New Zealand, um, Canada, South Africa. In Indonesia, the tons of like this have a means okay or a great, but however, in other, lang- other countries like uh, Russia, a tons of like this have a bad mean, so it means it's insulting. So we must know the culture difference of the countries so as not to cause misunderstanding and on other hand on the other hand without realizing it is different we ourselves have confused others with our recognizing understanding and cultural differences that exists uh, is of utmost importance each culture has its own uniqueness and characteristic. Different language means different culture. The importance of intercultural awareness being open to differences and skills in communication and interacting appropriately. Local, multinational, or international companies should immediately immediately conduct training on intercultural communication sensitivity uh, training and intercultural understanding for all their employee intercultural communication competence can be achieved through the process of intercultural sensitivity intercultural awareness and intercultural communication skills the attitude that one's own culture is the best and that other cultures should follow their own culture and be judged by their own culture standard is an attitude that should be avoided when interacting with people from different cultures this attitude is a form of negative ethnocentrism if a person tends to be negative ethnocentrism, it will hinder the success of intercultural communication. The language does not exist out of culture as socially inherited a set of practical skills and the idea characterizing our way of life. It's one 
on kinds of human activity. Language appears a component of the culture defined as set of result of human activity in different uh, spheres of human life like industrial, public, spiritual, language tool, and the culture tool. It forms the person of the person, the native speaker, through imposed to its language and put it upon in language world, world vision, mentality, and the relation to people. That is through um, culture of the people using given language as a mean of dialogue. dialogue. Conversation about the key issue and agencies facing intercultural communication. Similarly, we see 4K issue as crucial the future of intercultural communication. Uh, debate of over terminology, the debate over social learning versus community biology, the spread of intercultural communication to less studied cultures, and the place of critical views in intercultural communication. For global managers, uh, being able to communicate effectively is very important skill because smooth planning, organizing, monitoring, and facilitating everything can be done well through communication. When all managerial activity must be carried out together with people from different culture background, the most difficult thing is the process of uh, encoding and decoding message so that uh, mean, meaning can be uh, interpreted correctly. Also, verbal message are the primary means of encoding message. Nonverbal message such as tone of voice, facial expression, body posture, body language, distance, and eye contact carry a broader and more complex meaning. It is uh, pre- precisely uh, this nonverbal message that are often ambiguous and can lead to misunderstanding. We have now the definition, the concepts, and the arguments of cross-cultural communication. Now, we have to know what's the factor that influence it. Based on Bloch and Starks 1999, there are several reasons why there can be differences in the cross-cultural understanding. The first one is dialect and accent. Dialects and accent are usually highlighted when conducting cross-cultural communication, and this of course lead to the negative purpose. People who come from countries with strong dialects and accent are often looked down upon. As in Britain, most people still consider some dialects better than others. Extreme dialects, particularly when they are coupled with very strong accent, are regarded as inferior for business purposes. Regarding the accent, there are major differences of people accent in South Africa. The difference lies in speaking English as a first language and speaking English as a second language. Those people are described as speaking with an African accent, Indian accent, and the other people who have strong accent. Then, the main cross-cultural problem is that certain accents are more highly regarded than others. For your information, dialect and accent have different meanings. You probably confuse where the difference located. An easy way to spot the difference between a dialect and accent is to remember that dialect refers to a particular way of talking that is intrinsic to a town or a part of a country and it involves the use of distinctive patterns, grammar, and vocabulary. And accents are only concerned with pronunciation and not with vocabulary or grammar. The most important aspect 
of an accent is the particular sound used to create it. I give you an example for both dialect and accent. In the case of dialect, Scottish, the Scotland people say we and bonnie instead of little and pretty. And they also say I did not can instead of I don't know. In the case of accent, some tribes in Indonesia have different pronunciation of E word like begal and begal. The second factor is language function. One of the language function is to exchange small talk at a social occasion. This can cause problem for people learning a second language unless they live, live fully in the society of the target of language group. They have many difficulty in adapting to the language function. For example, a student whose second language is English may understand the university lecture easily but not be able to join the small talk at the student canteen. How can this happen? This is because he is not used to speaking other than his main language. He may be afraid to talk because he feels that he will choose the wrong road and end up making people offend. And the third is code switching. What does the code switching mean? This means people can switch language in systematic ways to reflect what they want to talk about. This shows that they are not native speakers of the language. For example, in the Philippines, Professional people often mix English and Tagalog in the same conversation. It's also similar in Malaysia. Malaysian often mix English and Melayu in the same conversation. There are a number of possible reasons for switching from one language to another language. The first one is to fulfill a need. A speaker who may not be able to express him or herself in one language might switch to another to compensate for the deficiency. As a result, the speaker may be triggered into speaking in the other language for a while. This type of code switching tends to occur when the speaker is upset, tired, or distracted in some manner, or when they are less fluent in one language. The second one is to express solidarity. Switching also commonly occurs when an individual wishes to express solidarity with a particular social group. Report is established between the speaker and the listener, when the listener responds with a similar switch. The last one is exclude others. Code switching may also be used to exclude others from a conversation who do not speak the second language. For example, if two people in an elevator in an English-speaking place spoke Spanish, then not only would the others on the elevator who don't speak Spanish would be excluded from the conversation, but also a degree of comfort and intimacy would be established between the Spanish speakers due to the fact that not all those present in the elevator can listen to their conversation. Is code switching a bad thing? As Skiba 1997 states, code switching is not a language interference on the basis that it supplements speech, where it's used due to an ability of expression. Code switching provides continuity in speech rather than presenting an interference in a language. So we can conclude that code switching is more towards a positive purpose than a negative one. When is code switching helpful? The social linguistic benefits of code switching include communicating solidarity with of affiliation to a particular social group. So, code switching can be viewed as a means of providing a linguistic advantage rather than an obstruction to communication. When is code switching harmful? If a dominant culture requires all citizens to conform to the dominant language and manner of speaking, or if subcultures are punished in any way for not conforming completely to the language majority, this is harmful. Fourth factor is different norms for turn checking. Different norms for turn checking here refer to the interruption given while having a conversation. 
There are cultural differences in how this is done. So, there are very different norms for interruption. For example, Japanese speakers use interruption more to show agreement than disagreement. This is their way of paying attention to the conversation, but it could be interpreted differently by the interlocutor. Meanwhile, British speakers will interrupt for both agreement and disagreement. We can conclude, if people bring their native tongues to a cross-cultural conversation in English, there is the strong possibility of misunderstanding. And for the last one is grammatical differences. Grammatical differences may create both misunderstanding and possible tension if the speaker or writer does not use the expected word or phrase. For example, it is spelled in Indian English to say, we hope that you could join us, whereas a native speaker would say, can. Sure, both words have some, the same meaning. The reason why can is less polite to use in conversation because it is sounds like we are questioning someone's abilities to do something, while the word cool is more polite because it sounds like we are asking someone willingness to do something. But for the native speakers like previous explanation, it doesn't really matter whether we use could or can in conversation in the context of politeness. Another example is grammatical differences between American English and British English. The difference lies in the use of tenses, for example in the past tense. American and British English often differ when describing a past event that has consequence in the present. So here's an example sentence. For American English, David ate too much, so he feels unwell. For British English, David has eaten too much, so he feels unwell. Or I give another sentence. For American English, Bill just took a painkiller. For British English, Bill has just taken a painkiller. We can conclude from the two sentences, British English use the present perfect tense more often than simple past tense, but American English is the opposite. You all still remember the formula of potencies? In this case, I will remind you the formula of positive sentence. Simple past tense, subject, verb to, and object. For the present perfect tense, subject, has or have, past participle or verb tree. So how intercultural barriers can be overcome? Barriers in cross-cultural create disharmony relation between employees of the organization. This barrier can be overcome in several ways, including the first one is making people aware of the problem. People should be aware that other cultures have value systems that are different from their own, and when they are aware of this, they will be a solid basis for communicating. This issue can be discussed in relatively small gatherings rather than a large one. And the second is taking a realistic approach to the problem. To create an emphasis on the need to recognize and accommodate cultural differences tends to emphasize human difference rather than the common needs and aspiration of people within the work situation. There needs to be a balanced and fair approach that leads to a shared corporate culture. This is a step that needs to be taken by management. Once the various groups have identified the differences that cause difficulties in communication, they are in a position to identify the problems within the organization. Why is developing an appropriate corporate culture is important? The culture decides the way employees interact at the workplace. A healthy culture encourages the employees to stay motivated and loyal in an effort to reduce turnover. The way employees interact with each other is important, especially in today's teamwork type environment. Therefore, it is important to know your culture is and communicate it directly to your employees. Corporate culture promotes competition. The culture of the workplace goes a long way in promoting healthy competition. Employees try their best to perform well to earn recognition and appreciation. 
the culture encourages co employees to do their best. Corporate culture unites employees from different backgrounds. All of our employees come from different backgrounds. They may be racially diverse, they may be culturally diverse, or maybe they social economically diverse. A culture helps to unite all these people into one unit. A strong corporate culture can unite people into a sense of unity of one common goal of accomplishing an important goal together. Corporate culture also helps create the brand image of the company. The work culture gives an identity to the organization and helps create the image the company wants to convey to the outside of the world, either through its employees, its services, or its products. Corporate culture guides employees and gives them a sense of shared directions and goals. Every employee wants to be clear with respect to what his roles and responsibilities are within the company. Likewise, it is important that the company articulate what its purpose is, what its goals are, and what its responsibility are towards its employees and its customers. If the corporate culture is in the line with its values, then the employees have a shared sense of directions and goals. They can unite their particular tasks and responsibilities with that, which is the company strives to accomplish. Many attempts to develop an inclusive corporate culture have failed. This is because management tries to formulate corporate culture without consulting it first. So management may not be able to avoid some ethnocentrism if they don't interact with staff from different cultures. It is often those things that are taken for granted in a culture that cause problems in cross-cultural communication. So, we have defined that corporate culture is organization mission, vision, and core values. It is the way in which your people do what they do, whether that is internal with other employees or external with customer vendors or the public at large. Your culture matters. An organizational culture can either be developed into something you would want it to be or in life to itself will be created for you. This is a choice you can make or have made for you. How should go about creating our culture? How should be involved in the process? What does the process look like? And how can I ensure that I trust my people will come up with? A professionally facilitated off-site retreat is what we believe is the best way to have the right people making the right decisions on our future as an organization. So the conclusion is the rapid development of science and technology in the wild of communication makes it easier for people to get to know other people's culture from different cultural backgrounds. Individuals who enter a new environment mean making cross-cultural contact, then cross-cultural becomes inevitable. And cross-cultural who knows intellectual communication is an obligation that must be carried out by someone to know, learn, and arrive at intercultural integration. Intercultural communication in the process of exchanging thoughts between people of different cultures. And many factors influence the occurrence of misunderstanding in cross-cultural communication in the company. The problems such as different norms, different dialects, and accents that make one person look down on someone with a strong accent, and other problems. This makes the collaboration between employees not solid. So the productivity of the company can decrease because it, there is no good cooperation between employees. Therefore, intercultural cooperation and synergy become an important aspect in this era. Companies that have intercultural competence will be able to succeed and sustain success in global business. Increase cultural sensitivity, the importance of intellectual awareness, being open to differences and skills in communication, and interacting appropriately and appropriately. Local, multinational, or international companies should be immediately conduct training on intercultural communication, sensitivity training, and intercultural understanding for all of their employees.
So that's all from us and I hope that this presentation can give you new insights about intercultural communication and thank you for your attention and wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. And don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Thank you.